President Biden raising $72 million in two months, surpassing his GOP rivals for the quarter, falling short, though, of Trump and Obama's re-election halls in the same period of previous cycles. This is, as a New York Times columnist, is urging Democrats to acknowledge the Biden family scandals and weigh the possibility of a plan B. Here with reaction is Fox News contributor and former counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, it's great to see you this morning. Uh, let's, let's talk about Hi, the fundraising and the sort of like burgeoning drumbeats, Kellyanne, that I don't know how big of a threat they represent to Joe Biden, that they certainly represent discontent on the left side of the aisle with Joe Biden. Well, I'd say it's too little, too late. Look, the cure for Trump derangement syndrome from so many of these columnists, mainstream media, most of high tech entertainment, you name it, has been to stop Trump. And the way they did that was they settled, and I do mean settled with a capital S for Joe Biden. Here's a guy who didn't win this, the early states until he got to South Carolina. He's an accidental nominee, accidental president. And, Will, they're now stuck with him because time is running out. I would note for you in the Frank Bruni column today in the New York Times where he takes on Biden, he takes on Hunter Biden. He says this is fair game to discuss Hunter Biden's woes. Uh, he then pivots to Trump. That's what they do. And he actually accuses people who are defending Biden's second term, he accuses them of being elitist. Isn't that rich? Hmm. Um, Frank Bruni and the rest of them created uh, an alternative to Donald Trump, and now they have to eat it and own it. I thought it was very curious, though, in this entire column, Bruni never talks about any of the other Democrats. He doesn't talk about RFK Jr.'s very real threat to Biden right now, very real challenge, 15 to 20 percent in the polls. He, he doesn't even write the words, dare utter the words Kamala Harris. Isn't that rich? Mm. That you have people on the left not even daring to say that this vice president is fit for the presidency. She's uninspiring to the nation. She's unfit for the presidency. He doesn't even talk about Gavin Newsom. All he wants is a, quote, better alternative to Joe Biden. But I predict that their obsession with Donald Trump for which there is no cure and no vaccine, will continue to propel them all to settle for Joe Biden again. So if you were handicapping that side of the ticket, Kellyanne, the Democratic side of the ticket, you'd still have to factor in things like Joe Biden's age and health. You would, to yes. some extent, have to factor in if there becomes some undeniable evidence in the corruption investigation, the influence peddling scheme. And the reason I emphasize underlying is because, boy, it's gonna take a lot for the mainstream media to acknowledge it as a truth. Um, if you were handicapping it, putting those things into the, into the factors, into the, into the race, what would you say is the odds it, it will be Joe Biden? I mean, are, will any of those things step in any way and disrupt his reelection campaign? It certainly has disrupted his approval ratings uh, overall and on all the main issues. It has affected his personal attributes, Will, which is something that even Bill Clinton and Barack Obama could always lean on, even when their approval rating had dipped because of this crisis or that situation. Joe Biden is not seen as inspiring a person with a plan, having the mental fitness, the energy, the physical energy, and so on and so forth. He's now not even seen as a nice guy, which was one of the chief attributes, always a lie. That was mm -hmm. flying, of course, but one of the chief attributes that helped propel him. But on the odds, I still think the odds are it's Joe Biden's because in politics, inertia is the most powerful physical force unless and until overtaken by friction. The friction would have to come in the form of all of the leaders in the Democratic Party saying you must step aside. And then they have to get over the hurdle of Kamala Harris, right. really angering a lot of women and a lot of people of color in the party for going right past her. They're running out of time. The Iowa caucus is six months from now, less than about six months from now. Hey. And you have to get your name on the ballot in all these places. So I think they're, they're stuck with this guy who's every minute of 80. One last point, I think that these scandals, the scandal around Biden has really mm -hmm. hurt him. And I think um, that, that as Donald Trump sees some of these indictments pile up and some of his legal woes, he's still at running them. And, they, and he's still way ahead. I think Kellyanne. competition has helped Donald Trump and competition has hurt Joe Biden. I, I, I'm, I've got to move on, but I can't also let you go without just asking you this quick. So this really has to be quick, okay? Or I'll get in huge trouble. But I have to ask you out of personal curiosity, do you think anybody made any dent yesterday or this week in Iowa? Did anybody stand out in any way? How about this? Not to catch Donald Trump, but to stand out from the other candidates on the Republican side. 
probably. I think Vivek Ramaswamy is making a big move. I think that it's Iowa's a little bit more hospitable to a DeSantis and a say a Pence um, than other states might be. Yeah. But uh, it's still it's still Trump's to lose in that state. Trump lost Iowa. Biden lost Iowa. So it's an important contest, but it's not the whole ball game. All right. That was awesome. Thank you, Kellyanne. And for more of a great analysis like this, she'll be on the big weekend show uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Always great to see you, Kellyanne. Thank you.